never thought I would live to see such shameful reports placed in my hands. Your Excellency, I am ashamed to bring them to you. The chiefs of the Susquehannocks wanted to talk of peace. The Indians talk of peace? But who is it who comes in the night and kills innocent men and women and children in their sleep? Always some other Indians, never the ones you're talking to. I hear these reports of murders by the Indians. But the reports from the Roanoke say that the murders took place near the Rapidan. And the reports from the Rapidan say that the murders took place near the Potomac. Don't you believe there's any danger at all? Yes, Colonel, I believe it. I believe there's a danger that in the terror caused by these rumors, many innocent lives will be lost. The Susquehannocks did us no harm. No harm at all. It was Virginian soldiers who fired on them simply for the crime of living near the Doegs. And now, because of rumors and terror and murders that might have been committed by the Seneca Indians, or even by Englishmen, for all we know. Now I have to read a report that tells me that Virginia soldiers were present at the cold-blooded murder of innocent men under a flag of truce. Governor Barclay, I swear before God that it was Truman's Marylanders who did it. He's claiming you did it. He's a liar, sir. His own men will stand to that. When he ordered them to shoot those Indians, he had to yell at them over and over again before they'd do it. And some of them discharged their weapons into the air rather than shoot those Indians. You speak as if you saw it. I had not marched away yet. Yet you did nothing to stop it. I refused to take part in it. Your troops were standing there fully armed. Do you think the Indians who might have been victorious over the Maryland troops could tell which soldiers were taking part and which were merely watching? Did you want me to fire on Englishmen to save the lives of Indians? It does sound odd when you say it that way. Let me put it another way. If they had killed my grandfather and grandmother, my father and mother, and all my friends. Yet, if they had come to treat of peace, they ought to have gone in peace. I invite you to scrutinize my behavior and find a jury that would indict me of any crime. A jury of Englishmen or Indians? Governor Barclay, surely you wouldn't want... What does it matter? Yes, we'll investigate everything. Yes. Yes. The Susquehannocks, eh, they've been at peace with us for decades. And now we're at war with them over the attempted stealing of a hog by another tribe. There are some who say that all Indians are the same. There are some who say that all Englishmen are the same. Are you the same as Colonel Truman? Shoot down unarmed men without trial? Never, sir. But there you stood with your soldiers. Now, tell me, Colonel Washington, what will you do now? For the Susquehannocks are a strong people and they'll want justice. What sort of justice do you think they'll take? How many of our people do you think will die? How many Englishmen will they kill for each of their chiefs who died? And how can I call such killings anything but justice? You don't mean that you approve of them killing Englishmen? I wanted to be governor of all the people of Virginia, red and white, living all together in peace. But now the English are at war with the Indians. And so I will supervise this war and try to finance it and hope that by the grace of God I can end it with as little bloodshed as possible. You mean to talk to the Indians of peace? Yes, if I can find any of them willing to trust a flag of truce after what you permitted to occur under one. You have made English law into a liar here, Colonel. That is all. You may go. Good day, Your Excellency.
You were hard on him, Sir William. I know. I fear that in the West and the North, more people would approve of what they did than disapprove. What's the death of an innocent man to them, so long as he's an Indian? This people is too democratic. They think that just because a majority wants to commit a crime, it's quite all right for them to do it. And when the Indians take their revenge, as they surely will, the people will cry out even more for me to protect them. It's a perfect opportunity for rebellion, Sir William. I just received a letter from Henrico County. It seems that my nephew and your cousin has begun to think that he is law there. Nathaniel, whatever possessed your brother to name his son after you? I think he meant it as a compliment, Sir William. Young Nathaniel arrested some Indians for stealing corn, though in fact they had not stolen corn from him, nor had anyone in the neighborhood reported any corn stolen. I hear he was always getting in trouble in England, too. Yeah, but the man who wrote me did not think that my nephew was in trouble. He was writing to praise him, saying that he hoped that his quick and firm action would be imitated in Jamestown by you, Your Excellency. What? I might as well go out and imprison all the peaceful Indians living within our borders. Exactly. Do you mean that someone is recommending I do that? Yes, indeed. And we both know him well. Arrest the peaceful Indians. Oh, that's bright. That's clever. They've already got an Indian war going on in New England. Talk like that will convince the Indians from Boston to North Carolina to unite against us. And the even uglier tribes across the mountains, too. If they all united against us, we'd be swimming home to England in a few weeks. Those who were lucky enough to survive at all. Oh, well. Things won't come to that. So thought the Caesars when the gods were at the gates of Rome. It galls me to have to fight a war in which I know my own side to be at fault. You aren't thinking of resigning, Sir William? And leave Virginia in the hands of men like our dear young cousin? No. When it comes down to it, right or wrong, I am an Englishman, and I know my duty. If there is an Indian war, I will prosecute our part in the war with all due wisdom and energy, praying all the time that God will be on our side and not the side of justice. Why have you soldiers come? Do you plan to kill us like the Susquehannock chiefs? We don't aim to kill anybody. The governor is trying to keep the peace. He wants to make sure that none of the white men start thinking you Appomattox Indians are doing any shooting. So he wants you to turn in your guns. Turn in? Give your guns to us for safekeeping. But what if our enemies attack us? That's why we're here, to protect you. And what if white men attack us? Will you shoot at them to save our lives? That's the idea, Chief. And this is Sir William Barclay who promises this? Here's the paper he signed with his own name. Sir William Barclay keeps his promises. My people will give you our guns. But if you do not protect us, soldier, I will pray to your God to curse you and all the white men forever. Do we carry our water in pots or in baskets? Pots. Uh, baskets leak. But pots break. Nathaniel Bacon, to your health. I haven't had claret like this since well, I left England. Well, I see no reason to live like a savage just because we live among them. Well, Giles, what do you think of my cousin, the governor, now? I think he's a scoundrel or a fool. That's what I think. Watch your tongue, sir. Even if he weren't my cousin, he'd still be the king's agent in Virginia. Well, I'd never lie to you, Nathaniel, uh, even if you get me hanged for it. I'd never get you hanged, Giles. 
Why do you think he's a scoundrel? Or a fool. Well, he's no fool. Who's speaking treason now? He disarmed the Indians, didn't he? Now, do you really think the Indians gave up all their guns? And he established an army to protect us? Protect us! Five hundred men stationed at the falls of the major rivers, roving here and there. At most, the Indians will have to wait ten minutes for the rovers to pass by before they sneak on through and kill and steal as they like. That's no protection. Well, we can all join hands in a circle around the settled lands. I don't see how else we could keep anyone from sneaking through. Maybe I misjudged you, Nathaniel. It's been done before. I thought you were a man of action. I am. Then how can you bear it that the governor has forbidden the local militia to do anything? He's even taken away our right to trade with the Indians and, and turned the fur trade over to a few of his pet friends from Jamestown. You had a trading license. You built a new trading house. Doesn't a loss like that affect you? I stand to lose some money by it. Are you the same man who arrested those corn thieves last summer or not? I am. When you did that, I thought, here's a man who can lead us. Here's a great man. But the governor's your own cousin, so you won't do anything to help us. What do you suggest? The governor is in Jamestown. What does he know of conditions here in the West? What does he care? It's not his wife and children who are at the mercy of the Indians. He can talk about patience and fair dealing. But what does he have to lose? Well, Giles, I can see that you're a man after my own heart. Am I? All my life, older men have been telling me what they thought ought to be done. I have always done what I thought should be done. I shall continue to do so. I see no reason to wait for Indians to have their fill of killing before we strike at them. I am prepared to lead a troop of loyal, fearless men in pursuit of the Indians, to drive them out from their hiding places in the swamps and kill or capture every one. More claret. My problem has been in finding a man or two I could trust. I don't want to get arrested at the first moment by a man who misunderstands and thinks that our proper self-defense is treason. <laughs> you haven't been out here long enough, Nathaniel. You don't understand the Virginian mind. Mm, perhaps not. There's a million acres of empty land here, and not a landlord for it except God and the Indians. English law means nothing here. In England, you could be hanged for shooting a deer. In America, the deer are ours for the killing. In England, if you set foot off the road, you were trespassing on someone's property. But here, there are no roads, and except for a few plots of cleared ground, you can't trespass because no one owns it. What does Governor Barclay mean to us? We love the king because we're Englishmen. But we need a different sort of government here. We need a, a government that will protect us from the Indians and then leave us alone the rest of the time. And if Barclay can't understand that, then Barclay has to go. That is treason. Do you think so? The penalty is death. So is the penalty for being easy on the Indians. Then I suppose a man of true courage will act. And never mind the consequence. Now, now what has Governor Barkley done for us? People used to say he's a good governor because Virginia is prospering. But are you prospering now? Yeah, oh, tell no. the truth. We got nothing to eat. That's the truth. <laughs> Mr. Bacon, you can't blame the drought on the governor, can you? I can blame him for raising taxes to support an army that supposedly is protecting us from the Indians while he keeps our local boys from defending themselves properly. We have barely the money to feed ourselves, but he takes what we do have to do a job for us that we can do better for ourselves. Does that make sense? No, not to me. I have heard that only a few days ago in Fairfield, a whole family was burned to death in the cabin as they slept. Yeah, it was some Susquehannocks. Yeah, it was the Parbuckie for my belief. It was Indians. Gentlemen, that is all I need to know. The charred bodies of little children don't ask the name of the tribe that took their lives. They ask for only one thing. 
that justice be done. It's a sure thing that if we don't do justice now, the whole country will be destroyed. That's right. We have no proof that the Indians mean to do anything of the kind. Neither did the New Englanders till they had the whole town killed or captured. Uh, If it ain't true, then what's everybody afraid of? Exactly my point. Where there's smoke, there's fire. That's right. The only fire I fear is lawless men. You have your right to your opinion, friend. But I, for one, will not stand by and watch the Indians have their way while our governor even though he's my own cousin, stands by. That's right. It's a bunch of volunteers gathered at Jordan's Point, Mr. Bacon. I say we go there and have a talk and see what they think. Well, why not? What else is there to do on a winter day? (laughs) (laughs) I'm fed up with it. I'm finished with it. I won't put up with any more. Oh, I'll give me some more of that whiskey. The worst of it is that the governor persists in making a foolish distinction between outside Indians and local Indians. Yeah. Now tell me the truth. If a Susquehannock from outside comes into a Pamunkey village with a dozen soldiers chasing him, are the Pamunkeys going to turn him over to us? No! Oh. And when the so-called friendly Appomattox see how safe it is to kill Englishmen yeah. and steal Englishmen's cattle, and take Englishmen's wives. Yeah. Yeah. Are they going to let the Doigs and the Susquehannocks have all the fun? No, 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 no. So why does the governor persist in allowing murdering Indians to live among us? Well, he won't let us fight and makes us pay for an army that won't fight either. Uh, what is Bark? He's a fool, that's why. Oh, he don't know nothing. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. If I were commander of a company of soldiers, do you know what I'd do? Now what? I'd send a petition to the Virginia Assembly, and I'd send a petition to the governor. I'd plead and beg them to give us permission to fight. (laughs) What good is a piece of paper? I'll tell you. Well, the governor and the Assembly are looking over our petitions and thinking up ways to tell us to drop dead. I'd be leading my company of brave men to put fear into the hearts of the savages. (laughs) They'd be the ones leaving their homes in terror, not our friends and neighbors. Let the Indians want the homeless, not us. That's it. Let the Indians flee from their country or die, yeah. not us. That's a good idea. Right. But then, I am not a commander of soldiers. Well, you are now. Shoemaker, Shoemaker, take command, sir. I can't take command. I'm not authorized. We authorize you, don't we, lad? Here. Hold it. Don't you realize I could be hanged for this? Are you going to let us down, then? No, lads. I'll not let you down. I'll lead you against the Indians. I'll sign my name to petitions to the assembly, to the governor, and to the king himself. And even if I hang for it, if I make this country safe for good men and women and children to live free of fear, I'll think my life a small price to have paid for it. I am helpless. Yeah, there must be something we can do. I've ordered him to remove himself from command of his little army, and he didn't answer. I offered him a safe conduct if he would come to Jamestown, and he refused. And now he has named himself the General of Volunteers, and there are men flocking to him from every part of Virginia. My own nephew. I wish he'd been hanged in England. I thought the Indians were my only problem. They were problem enough. He dreams of greatness. Well, when I was a young man, so did I. I remember during the Indian War in 46, when I rode right into Chief Ope Tonkanook's village with only a handful of horsemen behind me and took him prisoner myself. It made my name. No doubt he hopes to do the same. He's driven the peaceful paw monkey into the swamps and captured a few old men. Is that his glory? And Chief Opechonkanook was an old man too. One does the best one can with the enemies fate gives him. You're not siding with him, are you? 
I understand him, that's all. And if I can get peace without hanging him, I'll do it. It was a strange Indian war. Nathaniel Bacon's army did not kill a single enemy Indian, but they killed, enslaved, or frightened away most of the friendly local Indians. And yet such was the terror of the people of Virginia that they loved him for it. They made little distinction among tribes in those days. Unlike the governor, Bacon was actually doing something. The people saw fewer and fewer Indians every day, and Bacon did it all with volunteers. He cost the people nothing. So when Nathaniel Bacon was finally arrested and hauled before the governor and the assembly, even Bacon did not dream how many friends he had. I never meant to rebel against your authority, Your Excellency. I only did what needed to be done to protect the people. I did wrong. I will not disobey you again. I beg your forgiveness. I forgive you. God forgive you. Now let's have no more nonsense of rebellion. I accomplished all that I meant to. Just see to it I don't regret my leniency. Nathaniel, you're a fool. Huh. I've heard it said before. Why did you bow to him? Why not? I did what I set out to do. The Indians are terrified, the people are safe. So I made peace with the governor. I can't believe it. You really are an idealist, aren't you? What else could I have hoped to accomplish? Listen to that crowd out there. They've come here from miles and miles around the moment they heard you were arrested. They love you, man. You have only to say the word, and you are governor. Governors are appointed by the king. But they govern only as long as the people obey them. And if the people follow you, then you are their natural governor. Listen. How many are there? Who is it? David Wyatt. He's one of the leaders of the assembly. Come in. Didn't even have your door barred. Mr. Bacon, you must do something. The crowd refuses to believe that you are not under arrest. They're ready to tear down the governor's house and tear poor Sir William from limb to limb. They'll obey no one but you. You see? You must tell them to go home. What about my commission as general? Oh, you'll have your commission. I'll speak to them. What do you want of me? General Bacon! I am your general! Within a few days, Nathaniel Bacon was again in open rebellion, with most of Virginia behind him. Bacon led an army of 600 men to Jamestown. I see your word means nothing, Nathaniel. Well, my word is still true, and I tell you all that Nathaniel Bacon is a traitor against his king and against God. He has no authority to lead an army, and he deserves to hang. Now, if you are such a brave rebel, why don't you shoot me now? Here, I wear no armor. Here is my chest. My heart beats here. Kill me now, if you dare. I make a fair mark, for as long as I'm alive, your rebellion will not succeed. I am not here to kill you, sir. I am here to demand what the people have already granted me. A commission has general against the Indians. If I am a traitor, all of Virginia is traitors. I'll commission you general of volunteers, if you'll obey the orders of the officers of the regular army. Never! I will have a commission as general-in-chief of all the armies of Virginia. Or I swear I'll have the lives of this assembly and of you, sir. That would be murder. If you deny me what Virginia wants me to have, then you and this assembly are the traitors. And the penalty is death. That would be mob rule. The people want me, and the people will have me. 
Governor, they'll kill us all. Give him his commission. Give the command of the army at gunpoint to a rebel? I'd rather die. Sir William, the assembly would rather not die. There's hardly a man among us who isn't glad of what Bacon has done against the Indians. I'll give him his commission. Sir, this assembly is beneath contempt. But if you haven't the stomach for upholding the law, why should I? You have your commission, Mr. Bacon. Legal government in Virginia was effectively ended at that moment. Governor Barclay could not so much as raise a company of soldiers. No one would join him, for they would never consent to fight against Bacon. And by the end of July, 1676, Barclay was forced to sail across Chesapeake Bay to relative safety on the eastern shore. The government was in the hands of Nathaniel Bacon less than two years after he arrived in Virginia. Nathaniel has declared us to be traitors, Sir William. I am not concerned. I am. I rather like being alive. Alive or dead, my time as governor is over. The king will never leave me in command here now. He's wise enough to know that a leader who was once rejected can never be reimposed on the people. For 35 years, I governed here and governed well. But now they prefer Democracy. Well, let them see how well they like it. A people governed by democracy will always have exactly the government they deserve. And yet the successful rebellion did not last. Nathaniel Bacon could not stop his volunteer soldiers from plundering the citizens of Virginia as they had plundered among the Indians, and he became much less popular. Barclay captured the rebels' little fleet of three ships and found some support among the people. Bacon might still have won in the end, but he died of the bloody flux. The rebellion could not continue long without him. Barclay regained power and pardoned all but six of the surviving rebels. However, he was soon removed as governor, and the rebellion was not forgotten. The people of Virginia knew that they could throw out a governor if they wanted to. The government of England should have learned how hard it would be to impose on the American colonies a government they did not want. But instead, they blamed it all on Governor Barclay and promptly forgot all about it. Elizabeth. Where is she? Where is Elizabeth? Sir Edward, sir, I haven't seen her. I don't want to know what you haven't seen. I want to know what you have seen. Sir Edward, there is a note here on the table. It seems to be in your daughter's hand. Oh, what does it say? It's addressed to you, sir, and it's sealed. must look after the mowing today. The foreman never cuts it properly. What about your daughter, sir? Daughter? I... 
have no daughter. What does the note say? Elizabeth has married young master Nathaniel Bacon. Married him? But the master wasn't even angry. Angry? He said he had no daughter, woman. He's disinherited her. And I can't say I blame him. Young Master Bacon has earned his reputation as a scoundrel. Oh, I suppose he has. But a prettier fellow you'll never see. And so sad-faced. It makes a body want to comfort him. Comfort? You sound as though you're half in love with him yourself. In love? I don't hold with in love. Let's just say I think the world will hear of young Master Bacon. No doubt. When he's hanged. Maybe, but I wouldn't mind itching up to his wagon myself, if I was a lady. I was afraid you'd be angry with me, Father. I gave up being angry with you years ago. When you got into trouble for the dozenth time at Cambridge, I decided then I'd be content if you simply managed not to disgrace the Bacon family name. Marrying Elizabeth certainly was no disgrace. Not to you. It was, however, a disgrace to her. What do you mean by that, sir? Watch how you talk to your father. Yes, young man, it was a disgrace to her because she dishonoured her father by marrying a thief. A thief? I never stole anything. No, you never stole anything. But you would have if I hadn't got wind of it. Pretending to be young Charlie's friend in order to get him to give you the bulk of his inheritance... And for what? To pay your gambling debts? I have no debts. Do you think I'm a fool? You're in debt up to your ears. You stole the daughter of one of the best men in the neighborhood, and you came within an inch of winding up in prison and bringing eternal disgrace on the family. You are angry, Father. <sighs> no, Nathaniel. I'm weary. If I'd known what sort of a son I'd have, I'd have offered up different prayers before you were conceived. I'm sorry I'm such a disappointment to you. So am I. You had the ability to be great, Nathaniel. God gave you the wit and beauty to be a leader among men. Give me a chance and I will be, Father. A chance? Yes, I'm too merciful. One last chance, Nathaniel. I do mean it, Father. You'll not be disappointed. I hope not. Why did you send for the carriage? Are you going somewhere? No. You are. Where? Virginia. Virginia? In America? The servants have been at your house this morning, helping your bride to pack. You can't send me to Virginia. It's the end of the world. It's a cost. The governor of Virginia Colony is married to a cousin of mine. And my cousin, Nathaniel, the man I named you for, is in his council of state. People go to Virginia and no one ever hears from them again. And people go to Virginia to become great landholders and bring honor to their name and send their children back to school in England and live as a true and honorable squire ought to live. Here is my draft for 1,800 pounds. I am assured that that will be enough to establish you in Virginia. Do not ask me for more money as long as you live, Nathaniel. This is the end of it. Either you will come back from Virginia in honor and wealth, or you need not bother coming back at all. If you're ever going to succeed, you will do it now. But what if there's some disaster out of my control? There is never a disaster so terrible that a good man cannot control his own response to it. Don't plead with me, Nathaniel. How often have you pled with me before? How often have you vowed never to do wrong again? And every time I believe you, Nathaniel, you could convince a stone that it is a nugget of gold. The trouble is, it wouldn't be gold. Virginia is your last chance, Nathaniel. Truly, I wish you well. Thank you, Father. There's your new land, Mr. Bacon. Hmm. Aren't you glad to see it? Glad? 
Most of the passengers I carry are joyful to see land again. Is a prisoner joyful to see a new jail? <laughs> well, I see that you're a sailor at heart then, lad. And I had you pegged for a bookie land upper. You know the truth, don't you? They all think the sea is like an ogre waiting to devour whoever passes by. We know that the sea's a lady. A lady? Well, truth to tell, she's no lady. She's a woman. A cantankerous, beautiful woman. Well, I'm sure I tell you it's a lonely time till I'm back with my woman again. Men like us, we can't sleep on land. Isn't that right? Yeah. But it's the men on land who make the rules, even for you. Ah, so do I know it. That's another reason to stay at sea as much as I can. Out here with my own ship, I'm master. My fate's in my own hands. But on land, they treat me like a servant. Me too. Stay away from the land, then, and you'll be free. Or own it. Own it? Well, yes. But there's no land left in England that isn't owned by some lord or by the king. A man who doesn't own land is always the slave of those who do. The very earth you stand on. They have the right to drive you off it, and all the power of the kingdom is behind them when they do it. Well, I'll be a landowner here. And if there's anyone gets pushed about, it's me doing the pushing, and they're the ones who get pushed. You're an angry one, aren't you? And I thought you were so quiet. God made you full of secrets, I think. God did me no favors if he made me the way I am. If I'm to live like a slave, then why did he give me a free heart? <laughs> I'd watch my tongue there in Virginia if I were you. They aren't Puritans, but they get upset when a man talks like an atheist. Doubting the wisdom of God. What? Do they even own my tongue? Take another word of advice, then, Mr. Bacon. You're a handsome man. And if I'm any judge, I'd say that men and women take a liking to you right from the start. So keep your mouth shut and make friends. And use whatever money you have to buy land. I don't have enough to buy much. Oh, uh, this isn't England, lad. The land here is cheap to buy. And you know how to get more? You cut down the trees, and there it is where God put it. You plant tobacco in it, and it makes you rich, just like that. But I've learned a little bit more from the men I've carried back and forth. They talk to me more than you have, lad. Go by close in to Jamestown. Go deep to the fall line, where the country where you still find Indian footprints in your yard, and the roads are tracks underneath the underbrush. You can buy ten times the land out there on the edge. And there's real money in trade with the Indians. And if you like your freedom, you have it there. Well, the governor doesn't visit very often. <laughs> the governor is my cousin. <laughs> the more reason to get as far from Jamestown as you can. The only thing worse than Indians is relatives. I'd rather be at sea in a leaky boat than at home with an old uncle who thinks he knows how I should run my life better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue with you there, Captain. Breakfast? Oh, I wasn't hungry till now. Um, well, I've had mine. Thank you kindly. <sighs> Look at the shore. Oh, Nathaniel, at last we'll be on land again. Your wife is a lady, Nathaniel. Yes, she is. Uh, good morning to you both. Good morning. good morning. What did he mean by that? Well, that you're a lady, of course. What else should he mean? Uh, I, I don't know. Of course I'm a lady. I was born to be a lady, as you were born to be a gentleman. Why should it be worth remarking? I imagine that a man like him has more experience with other sorts of women. Oh, you look so much happier today. For this whole voyage, I was afraid that you were dreading our arrival. I'm going to get a license to trade with the Indians. Oh, Nathaniel. Indians? Savages? Oh, surely you won't have any dealing with them, will you? Well, why not? They're men, aren't they? Just as we are. <laughs> They're savage and, and cruel, like animals. They sneak about and kill people in their sleep. Where did you hear that? Everyone who heard we were going to Virginia warned me. Beware of the Indians. Stay in the civilized places if there are any. That's what I want to do. Your cousin will surely find a position for you in the government. I don't want a position. I want land. I want wealth. Nathaniel, that doesn't sound like you. Doesn't it? 
I've been thinking on this voyage. Brooding, you mean? Pondering. My father can tell me how to live my life because he owns land. He has money and I don't. And you, Elizabeth, when you decided to marry me, how did your father punish you? He, uh, disinherited me. He punished you with money. When I have enough money and land, I'll have the only freedom that is possible in this world. The freedom that comes from mastery. Like this captain is master of his ship, I will be master of my own lands. I'm not a man who will gladly be another man's servant. Nathaniel, it, uh, it frightens me to hear you talk like that. It frightens me how long it has taken me to learn what I know now. But how will you become wealthy, Nathaniel? Not by living in Jamestown. We'll stay there only long enough to buy a plantation in the West. But the Indians, Nathaniel. I will keep you safe from the Indians. I'm afraid. Would you rather go back to England? I'm afraid, but I'm not a coward. I am your wife, and you will find me beside you always, no matter what the danger might be. Yes, I believe you. And in the end, Elizabeth, I'll be a great man. You'll see. Virginia is the edge of civilization. But it was at the edge of civilization where Julius Caesar became great. I am no fool. I know I may never be a Caesar. But the name of Nathaniel Bacon will be remembered all the same. It was kind of you to see me, Governor Barclay. Oh, not really, Nathaniel. You are family. And I see practically every gentleman who comes here. There are few people of breeding in this colony, and it's always a pleasure to speak with a man who can read. <laughs> uh, have you any plans? Only the simplest of plans, I'm afraid. I'll buy a property in the West and try to perform my public duties as a citizen and the son of a good man. Your father is one of the best of the country squires of England. There are those who say that civilization depends on such men as he. But I warn you, it's a rougher sort of man in the West. Not that gentle a company here in the East, either. I think I have nothing to fear from the Englishmen. It's the Indians that cause my wife to be concerned. Indians? Why, there's no cause for alarm with them. Weren't there Indian wars? Decades ago. The Indians dwell in land reserved for them, right among us. There are savages outside our civilized pale, of course. But they rarely dare to do much more than steal a pig or two. Aren't the Indians restless under such restraints? Restless? It's the first time in living memory that they've been at peace. Long before we ever came, they were battling each other constantly. Now the Appomattox leave the poor monkeys alone. The white man and the red man live in perfect harmony in Virginia. My wife will be relieved to hear that. Indeed, so am I. For, uh, <clears throat> I must confess, I come with some half-formed notion of perhaps entering into relations with the Indians. In order to Christianize them and... Uh, you uh, want a license to trade with the Indians? Not to make profit, you understand. Oh, no, of course not. A gentleman is never interested in profit. But if his estate should grow a bit through his visits with the Indians, he will not spurn the money. May I have such a license? Uh, you know the laws. Fair dealing with them and no guns ever sold to Indians. We take their law seriously. Why, if the Indians are so peaceful? Oh, there have been wars in the past, and every bullet that killed an Englishman was fired from an English gun. If we can help it, such a thing will never be possible again. So you don't quite trust the Indians? I trust the Paw Monkey, the Chickahominy, the Appomattox, but north of us are the Susquehannock, the Doeg. Maryland hasn't done much to control them. There is danger, then. That men on the frontier blow it all out of proportion. They refuse to live in fortified towns and then complain because we don't protect them. Oh, you'll get no complaint from me. I didn't think I would. You're not that sort of man. The problem with America is that it's too big. In England, there are few places a man can hide. In America, there are few places where a man can be found. If the frontiersmen weren't terrified of the Indians, they could wander off into the wilderness beyond the mountains, and the law would never find them. So you use the Indians to keep the English settlers under control? I said nothing of the kind. 
morning. Tom Ballard is going home to England. His wife is ill. He has a plantation in the West, uh, quite a good one that runs right up to the fall line. I'll introduce you to him. Morning, Mrs. Bacon. Good morning, Bill. You're working early. I suppose so. You're outside a little early, too, aren't you? It's too hot to sleep well. Hot? Yeah, I'd say so. Virginia. You don't like it here, either. What's for me to like? I got into debt back in Bristol, and it was either leave my family to starve or or sell myself as a slave. Oh, Bill, you're not a slave. The only difference between me and a black man is that in seven years I'll be free. Well, I think I think that's a great difference, don't you? In seven years, my girl Ginny's going to be 14 years old, and there's no promise that says I'll have the passage money even then. 14 years old and no father in all that time. I'll help you write a letter. I'll write it for you. Will you, Mum? Well, that'd be a gift. If the master doesn't mind. Mind? Why would he mind? He isn't an easy man, Mrs. Bacon. He likes things to be his way. Well, he should. This is his plantation. And a fine one at that. Might as well be. I hear the master came this close to having so many gambling debts, he might have come to Virginia as a bond servant too. If I ever hear you speak about my husband in such a fashion again, I'll have you flogged. Oh, I beg pardon, my... my... <laughs> hey, you! What do you want? Beaver. Beaver. Hell. Hell. Hell skills. Not here. Over to the barn. Master's at the barn. Barn! Engines don't understand anything sometimes. Look, there's Mazda. Nazanin. Nathaniel! Nazanin! Go away! Uh, don't sneak up on me again. Uh, he's gone now. Oh, I hate them! Uh, you're not the only one, Mrs. Bacon. They sneak around so a body never hears them. Then they walk right across a field easy as you please. Up in fences well, so much as a buy your leave. As if they thought it all belonged to them. Well, it used to. It uh, doesn't now. But they dream of taking it back. I know they do. I've heard stories of what they do. Sneaking into bedrooms when people are asleep. Cutting their throats in bed. Oh, yeah, best not talk like that, Mrs. Bacon. I think sometimes that the Indians are devils. During June, it's hard to tell the difference between Virginia and hell. Oh, begging your pardon, ma'am. If there were no Indians, the place would be almost bearable. No, I'll tell you this. If there's ever another Indian war, there won't be no Indians left. Even if I have to use this here axe to make sure of it. You can bet I wouldn't put up with murdering Indians like they do up in New England. New England? Haven't you heard? Looks like a full-fledged war up there. Old towns burnt up. Hundreds of people slaughtered. The, the Indians are at war? <laughs> Don't you worry, though. If any of our Indians start getting ideas, we'll... Uh... You'll kindly tend to your wood cutting, will you? Oh, yes, Master. I beg your pardon, sir. If I want my wife to hear blood-curdling stories about Indian wars, I will tell her myself. Oh, Nathaniel, is it true? There's some truth to it. Well, why didn't you tell me? I was planning to. It was just rumors until today. But we're safe enough here. For now. And if the Indians start anything here, I'm prepared to do my duty. Duty? I will gladly form a regiment of men and finance it myself to hunt down the Indians and kill any one of them who dare raise a hand against an Englishman. Fine, I am with you, sir. I'm gratified to learn of that, Bill. You'd be a good man to have behind me in a battle. <laughs> I've, I've never met a man yet that I couldn't lick. And I pray you never meet one. Now come in, Elizabeth. This is not the proper weather for a lady to be out of doors. The Indian War in New England was fierce and deadly, and word of it quickly filtered down through the tribes. Yet there was no sign that the Indians meant to break the truce in Virginia. 
It all began as a quarrel, a misunderstanding. Not so, eh? Five bushel corn. I already paid you for those beaver skins. And I'm not going to pay twice. Not pay? Not pay me? I paid somebody, and he looked like you. I am not going to pay again. Now, get off my land before I have my servants run you off with muskets. It was in the north of Virginia, near the Potomac River. The Doeg Indians who lived in the land the English had named Maryland had not yet learned that when a man with a musket and a man with a bow and arrow disagree, the man with the musket is always right. So in the night, a group of Doegs crossed the Potomac and tried to steal some of Tom Matthews' hogs. Hey there! What are you doing? Hey! Stop! Even Indians? Stay away from Mr. Matthews' hogs. So they escaped across the river. <laughs> Lucky we killed a few first. There's no catching them now. But the Doeg soon came back to get vengeance for those of their number who had been shot. In the battle that followed, one of Tom Matthews' herdsmen was killed. Ignoring the law, the local militia crossed the Potomac into Maryland. And at dawn... Get ready, Captain Brent. Let's wait a little longer. Give Captain Mason time to surround his Indians. English, man! They've seen us now. Parley! Parley! No suit! Parley! Parley! Look at him, cringing like an Irishman. Hey, friend, you ain't so brave in the daylight, are you? Quiet! All right, Chief. We want to know about the murder of old Mr. Hen. Where's the men who did it? I don't know murder. I'll have your teeth out of your head if you've got any. Now, you tell me where the killers are hiding, or I'll kill you. You see this musket? You want this down your throat? Hold off, Silas. Look! He's making a run for it. Dead and gone. Look out! They'll attack now, for sure. Fire at will. Sounds like Captain Brent's got a battle on his hands. And look, they're coming out of this cabin too, Captain Mason. Firemen, protect yourselves. No, no, no. Just Brent, Susquehannock. Stop! Stop shooting! Men, shoot no more! In the Lord's name, stop shooting! These aren't toigs. We're killing the wrong Indians. Well, what were they doing on Doic land? Doic land, Susquehannock land. All the same. It didn't matter now that it was an accident. The once friendly Susquehannocks were at war with the English and terror of the Indians spread through the frontier counties of Virginia. Oh, Nathaniel, you're back. I'm so afraid when you aren't here. You won't have to be afraid much longer. I've already taken some action. Caught some Indians with stolen corn, and they'll be flogged for it. But what if they try to get vengeance on you? Well, let them try. I hope they do. I'll be ready for them. Don't you see, Elizabeth? There are only two ways that a man can have a chance at greatness. One is to be lucky, and it's plain I'm not that. The other way is to go to war. If there's any bloodshed around here, it won't be English blood. And if there's any glory to be won, I'm going to win it. But Nathaniel, what, what if you get killed? I'll see to it I don't. I'm going to win this time. You watch. You watch.